What does every Christian need to know about anti-Semitism? My name is Aaron, I'm a Jewish follower of Jesus, and if you're a Christian too, I'm going to quickly help you understand what you need to know about anti-Semitism and why it's so important for you to know it. Okay, so first, Jesus loves the Jewish people. Not only was Jesus a Jew, but Jesus loves his people. His mission was to restore the people of Israel and rescue the Gentiles. And Jesus knew that many of the Jewish people would reject him. But this didn't cause him to turn on the Jewish people. It brought him to tears. Jesus loves the Jewish people so much that even when he was being crucified, he was more concerned for the Jewish people than he was for himself. On his way to the cross, some women were weeping for him. And Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. That's Luke 23, 28. He explained that they should weep for the destruction that the Jewish people were going to undergo after its leaders had rejected him. It's not what he wanted for them. And the apostles and all the first members of the church were Jewish too. And they taught in the New Testament that God had not rejected the Jewish people. At the climax of Romans, Paul wrote three chapters on how he loves the Jewish people because God loves the Jewish people and has not rejected them. He said, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. That's Romans 11.1. 1. But even though this is God's heart in the New Testament, many Christians have forgotten the Jewish foundation of their faith, and they've incited hate towards and even attacked Jewish people, often claiming to do so in the name of Jesus. Now, I used to think if someone's really saved, if they're really a Christian, then they can't do something like that. But it's not so simple, unfortunately. There's been many Christians who seem like true Christians in the past and still today that have preached and taught wrong theology that's paved the way for all types of murderous hatred towards the Jewish people. Some of you might have heard of Justin Martyr, Jerome, or St. Augustine. They preached that God was done with the Jewish people. Jerome called them serpents, and Augustine called them Christ killers. And there are other towering Christian figures that you might not have heard of, but are some of the most significant people in the early church, like Chrysostom, Hippolytus, and Origen of Alexandria. And a lot of them didn't only teach dehumanizing theology about Israel, but also actively incited hatred towards the Jewish people. For example, let's focus on the one who was considered one of the greatest church fathers, Chrysostom. People said he was golden-mouthed, one of the most eloquent preachers of truth and love. But the same preacher also preached a series called Eight Homilies Against the Jews, where he said the synagogue is worse than a brothel, and he hates the synagogue, and he hates the Jews for the same reason. When you realize that the towering figures in the early church spewed this kind of hatred about the Jewish people, it isn't hard to imagine how it opened the door for your average Christian to think that violence against the Jewish people was no big deal. So you get atrocities like the blood libels and the pogroms, which were violent riots against the Jewish people, and a lot of the time supposedly in the name of Jesus. You get the violence towards the Jewish people in the Crusades, as people from Europe banded together over and over again from 1096 to 1270 to take the Holy Land from Islam. And these so-called Christians also turned their violence towards Jewish people when they noticed, hey, there's religious outsiders we can kill only one town over. One crusade slogan went, kill a Jew, save your soul. And you don't just get the blood libels and the pogroms and the crusades, you get the expulsions across Europe and then the Spanish Inquisition where Jews were forced to con either convert to Christianity, leave, or die. And if they converted, they were forced to read a humiliating public statement that they were renouncing their Jewish identity. And then they were often tortured into confessing that their conversion was fake anyway. You can also look at Martin Luther. He thought Jewish people were going to convert to Christianity in droves once they saw the Protestant movement. But 20 years later, when he didn't see the mass conversion he expected... He turned bitter and wrote a book called On the Jews and Their Lies, where he absolutely thrashed the Jewish people, and he called for the destruction of every Jewish person's home. And only a couple hundred years later, in Martin Luther's home country, Germany, Hitler used Martin Luther's book, On the Jews and Their Lies, to justify what he did in the Holocaust. Now, the Holocaust was, of course, anti-Christian, it's about the closest thing to hell and about the farthest thing away from what Jesus wants. But you should see 
and grieve the fact that true Christians who had been dehumanizing Jewish people with wrong theology and hatred paved the way for many of the blood libels, many of the pogroms, and even the Holocaust. You should be able to see why many Jewish people really think Jesus is anti-Jewish. There's a Catholic scholar named Edward Flannery who said, Those pages of history Jews have committed to memory are the very ones that have been torn from Christian history books. He's right. Many Jewish people think Jesus is responsible for a 2,000-year legacy of hatred and persecution towards the Jewish people. I've had friends ask me with tears in their eyes, how could you willingly join a group that is responsible for killing so many of our people? Today, there are about 250,000 Jewish people like me who believe in Jesus, more than there's ever been. But that's out of the 15 million Jewish people in the world. So only about 2% of Jewish people believe in Jesus. That means Jesus' people, the people who were the founding members of the church and even welcomed in the Gentiles, are today an unreached people group because we've been neglecting them and even attacking them for the past 2,000 years. So why should Jew hatred matter to you? Because as Christians, we are Jesus' representatives, and his name is being denigrated by how Christians speak and act towards Jewish people, and because Jew hatred has been rising. And you, the church, as the body of Messiah, should stand with the Jewish people. Paul said the church is like a body, the body of Messiah. And he said the Messiah's body is made up of two parts, Jewish and Gentile believers of Jesus. And if he said if one member suffers, all suffer together. So the body of Messiah is not healthy as long as Jewish people are neglected. But like an autoimmune disease where the body fights off healthy cells, the church has neglected and attacked the Jewish people. The body of Messiah has an autoimmune disease. That's why it should matter to you. And here's what you can do about it. First, prayerfully search your own heart and see if there's any bitterness, anger, or fear about the Jewish people. Second, repent on behalf of the church. Follow the lead of the biblical prophets who repented on behalf of their people. Even if they hadn't personally participated in sin, they still repented saying, we have sinned. Daniel's probably the best example of this. Even though he was a righteous man, you'd think he was the biggest sinner in Israel if you read his prayer in Daniel chapter 9. And you and me are part of the church, so we need to repent. Third, pray for the Jewish people. And educate yourself about anti-Semitism and how it's been growing rapidly over the past few years. Fourth, share the gospel. Tell the Jewish people in your life about Jesus. Jews and Gentiles alike are under the power of sin, Romans 3.9. And the only way we can experience life and life abundantly is to put our faith in Jesus. Paul said in Romans 10, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Now this is true of everyone, but he did say it while he was specifically writing about how much he longed to see the Jewish people saved. So share your faith. Tell the Jewish people in your life about who Jesus really is and what he's done for you. But remember, love them unconditionally of their response. If they never believe in Jesus, Jesus still wants you to love them. And Paul finished that thought by saying, And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach to them unless they are sent? So another thing you can do is send preachers. And you can do that by giving to solid ministries that share the gospel with Jewish people lovingly. So if God's tugging on your heart to give, just to be honest with you, I need more funds to keep making content like this. So you can give to me at thetorahguide.com slash give if God's calling you to do that. But there's many other great ministries that you can give to too that need people to help them send preachers. But giving to a ministry doesn't replace the call that God puts in your own life. God still wants you to be a faithful representative who loves the Jewish people well yourself. Giving is just one of the ways to do that. Now it's true that even though Jesus loves the Jewish people, the church is responsible for a lot of violence towards Jewish people. Now, because of this, many Jewish people see a false, hateful Jesus instead of the real, loving Jesus, and they don't know the gospel. But there have always been faithful Christians who've represented Jesus well by loving and supporting the Jewish people. And that is what you and I need to do if we want to be faithful to Jesus. But like Dr. Michael Brown said about this, tears of love can wipe away the stains of blood.